So, hey guys, and welcome back to X Plane 11. So, um, yeah, today we're flying from London Stansted to Oslo Gardamont. So, um, again, it's a premiere, and, well, if you were here for the last two, um, Zyeshov ones, then you know exactly what's going on right now. Well, basically, right now in the real world, I'm just about to board this aeroplane. Echo India does, well, not this telco, sorry, but I'm about to board this flight. FR, what is it, FR1, FR1318 from San Francisco Gardenmon at, uh, well, it's past uh, 6.25 in the morning and um, arrives at Oslo at around 9.30 local time. So, um, yeah, very early morning stream this one. And to be fair, I doubt many people will even catch it because, bear in mind, you land at half eight in the morning UK time on a Saturday. Yeah, let's see if anybody actually tunes in for this premiere. I can hope, I can hope, but it doesn't exactly seem the most likely. Uh, why is Ryanair departing from Heathrow? Questions we will never know the answer to. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yes, yeah, so, being this early, this will be the first light of the day. Meaning we get to set up the aircraft from Cold and Dark, which is always a lot of fun. Which means first things first, I get this um, IRS aligned because this is also going to take the most amount of time. Uh, message is fine. Power's in the aircraft, sorry. Uh, ground power turned on, battery needs to come on. Can't switch the, uh, can't close switch for some reason, there you go. And emergency lights on. FMC. Clear the message, go to position. And so you're at Stansted, Echo Golf, Sierra Sierra, with our gate being 6-2. Take our gate, I should take our last known position. And once the IRS is ready for us, we we'll do that again, shall we? Whilst the battery is on. There we go. Uh, enter heading, that's fine. Stick the position to that. And the aircraft will now start to align itself. Route wise, we're going from Stansted to Echo Golf, sorry, Echo November Golf Oscar, sorry, Golf Mike. Company routes we won't use. Flight number is FR1318. And runway news will be 2 2. Just double check that. Uh, two zero one. Yeah, runway two two's in use. So perfect. It. We will do the fueling now. So weight and balance. Fuel on board. We require six eight nine six. So in fact, yeah, we'll just uh, empty a lot of fuel actually. Six eight nine six. So we'll put another hundred in each tank. Six, that's a bit too much. One down each, one down in each. Okay, no, we have to... We can always put a slight imbalance in. In fact, what we could do is just set that to 80. 80. Okay, apparently you can't do that. Uh, why not? 3,500. Changes back. Never been massive fan of the uh, X-Plane default refueling. For reasons you can probably guess. Right, um... So what is it? 3, 4... 5.5... Sorry, 4.5... 3, 4... 4... 3... 8... 3, 4, 4, 8... I need in both... 3, 4... 4, 6... That will have to do. So, done. Apply changes. Aircraft is now fueled. Um, passengers can start boarding, so we'll start up the active flights we'll with on Projects Fly and on Virtual Ryanair. And so we should hear the crew start talking in a moment in the background. Reserves 1.1, cost next 23. Flight level 370, with average winds today being 221 to 061. Set that, execute, and take off. We will do 
once we've um, set up the routing today. So departure will be runway 22 on the Charlie Lima November departure, 8 Romeo. We can't reset the uh, plan yet just because the map isn't quite there. Yeah, departs on to Charlie Lima November. And then that gets followed by Art of. That's then direct to Ripam. And believe it or not, that is our entire routing for today. Um, yeah, because I don't think we can add something like SVA to this. Oh, we can do. Um, Sven, they're both very different locations, but I presume you're the closer one. So if I delete that and then go, whoops, do that and then go to Art of. What am I doing wrong? Sorry, it's Art of then. Um, okay, that was actually correct. I'm just messing up right now. Uh, no need to delete anything. We'll just put Rip and back there. CLN then Art of. That in, then that. So we do go to 370, back down to 205 on top of the cents, and then we will set our arrival once we do get to um, to Oslo. Oslo Garden Moment, we set the runways and all that later as well. A few runways to use, so I'm actually just 19 or um, 01. A couple of approaches in, none of which actually go to Rip Hand, so I have to use a few charts to find that. But again, the problems we can figure out once we have gone into the air. Uh, Right, I've had a panel. We will uh, start up the hydraulic pumps. We'll start up the uh, probe ice anti heating. Close the window heats. Make sure that all bleeds are off. So that's to 3 7. And once we're ready for the APU, we'll then start up the uh, left two fuel tanks as well. I see aircraft is refueled, so. Ground handling, we can now get rid of the uh, fuel truck. So that'll get going. Got some uh, front fuel, front cargo if required. And again, Ryan there. Uh, not exactly um, going to have much cargo in the front. Bit of a <laughs> bit of a fun chat going on Unicom right now. Bit of fun on Ryanair landings, but hey. Nothing I can do about that. We no longer require you. And uh, back to the FMC. We'll set that back to departure. You go to legs. Uh, activate the flight plan as well. Probably useful. And this departure, hopefully you're not going to have too much of a hold at um, 6000 as well. Next thing I want to do... Yes, yeah, so go to routes, take off, just go back, I need to go to perf M1 limit, set the sail count, then take off, flaps using temp, sense gravity in, and set the three V speeds. Oh gosh, chat has just gone the haywire right now, Unicom has lost all control, set our... Rotate speed, so that'll be 136. <laughs> Boy, I stopped talk chatting on Unicom. <laughs> I have the flight factor 320 and 319. Tolis is better. Agreed. Alright, so our cheat set at uh, 370. 5, 6, 7. Flight director's on. Uh, heading doesn't matter, course doesn't matter. That's all fine. So, just waiting for the um, IRS now, fully aligned. That will take a couple of moments, two moments. And then once that's ready to go, we'll be able to start our pushback. In fact, we will pre-plan it. Turn the uh, iPad to our left, the um, EFB, electronic flight bag. 
and let us go through that. So yeah, on start flight leg, ground services, better push back, pre-plan. Won't request it just yet. We just need to put it into position, ground just control. like that. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Go back, back, PA system, welcome on board, we'll do that in a moment. Uh, doors, cabin lighting, that's all fine. Doors again will close once they are ready for pushback. Your dampener can now come on. And APU will start up once the uh, RS is lined up. So we need to try to part around 25 past. Currently it is 14 past. We've got about 10 minutes to get into the air, which is plenty of time given the Ryanair turnaround time being around 25 minutes. So, uh, should be more than enough, especially for the last slides of the day. It's just a case of setting up the aircraft and getting ready for it to go. So, one minute left on that. We'll stick it on the... Um... Oh boy, I've gone to uh, testing mode. It'll take a few seconds for that to uh, turn off again. So, we'll set that position, and once the aircraft knows where it is, it can then start up the displays. So, why wait for that? And a chance to quickly look around Stansted Airport. So, over in front of us, we have Ryanair 48 Hotel Zulu, currently at gate. We have Ryanair 5132, currently also at gate. Over here, you've just come to land, Ryanair 7 Lima Romeo. And then, no, oh, here's a. Oh, no, so that's not me. That's me with nobody else behind me. I said this actually, uh, all this construction going on right now, that's been long finished, or well, this is now Ryanair parking storage area. Show that the scenery is slightly outdated. Not by much, but there is a bit of outdating going on there. From the inside of the terminal. Where are we? We are here. Oh, oh okay, that's disappointing. Uh, yeah, can't really see ourselves through the window, can't we? Inside of Stansted Airport, sir. Uh, well, this is now long lines, which means I will now start up the APU. In a moment, the APU will start to power up. Daytime, so low glass not required. Position strobes, not yet. Anti-collision comes on, which means doors will now be sealed. And let us go to... Yeah, that's all now locked, so that will be fine. Ground services can now all drive away. And we'll go for the, uh, whoops. Go for the welcome message as well. Well, this is sounding great. Uh, we'll now close the cockpit door, and APU power comes on. GPU off, trying to make, make the same mistakes I did at um, Jeshuf, if you remember that. Uh, GPU disconnect, and chocks we can now remove. Everything looking good. Fuel tanks on, top two tanks stay off, since there's no um, fuel in the centre tank. And overhead panel is looking all fine. Uh, push and start. Sorry. Uh, Echo Golf Sierra Sierra ground. Push and start. Stand 62. So we're now ready for pushback. We shall bring the better pushback guy over to me now. So request pushback. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. That's all good. That is all good. Uh, see about sign. We will now turn on as well. Service into phone as well, just in case it's required. There you go. Our position is now on the um, top of the aircraft there. So pushback connects up. We go pushback. Start up the engines. Make our way to runway 22, which is, like I said, just in front of us. Not a particularly uh, long taxi list. 
And then after we push back as well, we can start up tier casts and get ourselves ready to go. Again, seven Lima Romeo. Now pulling into gates. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. That's all good. Passengers all happy. We're ready to start our first flight of the day. So, as I say, if you guys check this flight on to Flyer 24, um, FR1318, right now I'm on board this aircraft and on my way to Norway for the weekend. So, I'll be back midday tomorrow. But, um, yeah, during climb out, I'll definitely talk about uh, my reasoning for going to Oslo. Why Oslo and nowhere else? So, aircraft now being lifted. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Parking brake released. Starting pushback and you may start engines. That's good. Engine starts up to both and ground on one. Sorry, ground on two. Into position. Engine to fuel flow starts. Engine two should now be started. Now take over. And engine one, we can now do the same. As always, fairly simple procedure in the 737. Maybe uh, one or two more steps in an A320 startup. But still, nothing that's going to be too overcomplicated. So, I'll be in seats. What seats I actually book for this flight? I know I like going for the uh, window seats. I'll be in 26F this flight. So, not quite there. That'll be 25... Yeah, this, this here is my view for the flight. So, uh, not too bad. Not too bad. I can see uh, enough that's going out the window. And like before, I do like my early morning flights. I do like my early morning flights. You do get quite a few stunning views, especially as the sun rises. So... So we'll now disconnect, and in a moment, we will then be able to start our taxi to the runway. That's down to 10. And trim to, let's connect to that, 3.64. Out there. Mm -mm. TCAS, we can arm. Packs, or engine, uh. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Right, engine bleed. APU bleed off, engine bleeds on. APU off. And packs on. Air conditioner will now start up and blow cold air into all the face of the passengers who will now turn off the uh, air conditioning just above. Besides all that, anti collision lights are now on, strobe lights can come on, and taxi lights will also turn on since we are now taxiing runway 22, Echo Golf, Sierra, Sierra. Parking brake off, throttle up lightly. And let's make ourselves our way to the runway. Leaving Sunset's not too difficult. Um, I should probably actually make sure my uh, altimeter set correctly. 0986. Nine, 986? Sheesh, that is a very low um, altimeter today. We'll do the same for the other side. My 
9789786. So got a slight right turn at the moment. And let's just stay left straight onto the runway. All my trackers are active, so these lights will be recorded. Which is always good to see. So yeah, the guy coming to land earlier in Stansted. Before I do enter the runway myself, it is always best to hold position and just kind of keep an eye out for anybody else that may arrive. The guy just departed in front of me. Five, one, three, two. Yeah, very beautiful sight that. Back of the 7-3, just leaving um, Stansted Airport and making his first turn onto his route. By the time we get to the runway, distance should be all cleared, spacing's fine, so that won't matter too much. I just got to make a call out for anybody that may come into land. Because landing traffic is the uh, only one that I really need to be, I guess, not concerned about, but... You know, when they're across on the runway and someone's about to land in behind you, probably not best to uh, meet up with them. Right, so hard parking brake. Uh, holding runway 22 Echo Sierra Sierra. Whoops. Give that a moment for other traffic to announce that they are on their way. And make sure that everything's all set. Then lights are active. That's all fine. As far as I'm aware, we are ready for takeoff. Departing runway two two. Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. Parking brake off. Put a bit of throttle in. Everyone from the co pilot sides. Just keep an eye out of the window in case anybody else is just not contacting ATC right now. But that looks clear. So throttle armed. Turn onto the runway. Engine, whoops, uh, brake set to reject to take off. That's something I should have done. That's fine. Engine's up 50%. Engines are stable. N1 active. No. I get. I forget that my uh, throttle is still um, spiking, so we will have to uh, do that manually, I guess. V1. Rotate. Nope. Gear up. There we go. Throttle up one. Sorry, flaps up one. Also, pilots. Sorry, B nav, L nav, autopilot sets. Flaps up one. Lock the landing gear pressure and flaps up completely. Set the auto brakes off as well. So we get 10,000 before we turn off the landing lights. And we'll now be clear of the Stansted airspace. Stansted airport just being behind us now. Yeah, there we have it. Now leaving Stansted Airport. Weather-wise, not expecting too much out of the ordinary. It's a simple flight heading up north. 
In fact, I don't actually know what the weather is like in um, Oslo right now. Echo November Golf Mike. A uh, few clouds at 400, overcast 1,600. Okay, so there is a slightly stormy landing into um, Gardamon. I may actually need to use ILS for that. We shall see. It's like at least a Cat 2 landing at the moment. There we go, aircraft's not going to try and get itself back onto the flight plan. It's a little off course. Check my heading, if I can put a bit more angle on that, yes I can. Just let the aircraft uh, use its maximum capabilities to get itself back on course. Slightly harsher turn than what most would do, but... I should get the aircraft back on course anyway. In fact, just to uh, get it more on a straighter line, let's go straight to Delta 267 Uniform. And that will level the aircraft off, as well as get to the next waypoints, where then we can manage our heading. And there we go, that should be. Our departure sorted. And then, in fact, I'll just zoom out on the uh, PFD a little bit, just to give myself a, a more visual of where we're going. In fact, check the waypoint, SVA, which is en route to um, Gardamon. Perfect. Not many waypoints, like I said, we've set, but uh, enough to get us out of here. And then once we reach cruising altitude, 3-7, then you guys will have an ETA best on when we land. Uh, what altitudes have we got ahead of us? So, next waypoints in 6 nautical miles. We'll climb to 5,000. And then after that we have a thousand, about 3 nautical miles to get to 6. And once we leave our SID, in fact, let's skip that completely. Let's go straight to Artov. Which means once we leave Delta 267 Mike, we'll then be on free reign to climb fully. So our SID now, in fact, ends there, just 15 nautical miles, which is uh, not too bad at low altitude. So, um, yeah, if you're watching the premiere right now, then I salute you people for getting up at 6 in the morning to watch this. As I said, I'm not expecting uh, most people in the world to tune in, especially uh, for a premiere at such an early time. As I said, the fun part of this is the fact that I'm going to set craft in the real world right now. And so, as I keep saying during premieres, it's my way to kind of kind of bring you guys with me on holiday. Bring on the flights. I'm sitting in this seat right now, looking down at the uh, UK below. While surfing the clouds. There we go, reach our waypoints, so we're now continue to climb to 5,000 and then to 6 shortly after. My smart car's been quite slow at the moment on my screen. Not fully, uh. Not responding is not what I'm looking for, but it's just not quite, uh. Not quite there. I hope he doesn't crash.
halfway through the um, flights. Anyhow, about to reach our next waypoints. Which will bring us up to 6,000. There we go. And then once we reach the next bit, we'll then be on free climb. Continue all the way to um, 19,190 by Artov. There's an aircraft to my right hand side at 30 miles, 20, about 20 miles ahead of us in second. Although level, he is most likely then going to to Heathrow. That would be a Heathrow arrival, so nothing we need to worry about too much. There you go, crossing 6000, our Timitar sets to standard. 1013, hang on, explains having a moment. Um. Okay, it's actually the worst not responding, it's done in a long time, explain. There we go, standard altimeter. And we're getting around 30 frames right now. I'm not quite sure what's causing this uh, moment of hysterics. Maybe down similar to the issue why smart cars is being a bit funny. Quick pop into task manager. Might try and just give it an extra boost in the processing. Yeah, I gotta remember that task manager is also uh, prone to slow everything down as well. There we go, that's looking much better now. Have a quick look from the outsides. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Man, X plane is not being healthy right now, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Let's just not drive the camera around, shall we? Let's just leave it normal. And we'll soon go okay, past 10,000, so landing lights can now come off. And there we have it. Passing 10,000, we are now free to just chat, I guess. And, uh, ooh, I don't know why x -Plane is being so odd. I'm sure Smart Cars is just... I don't know. I don't know. Just go to the cockpit and then not touch it for a little bit. As long as we keep the aircraft in a constant state of moving, then uh, it's not going to cause any issue for us. Right, so why am I going to Oslo? Well, the easy answer is because, as I say, I want to... I want to complete all the Scandinavian countries this year. I want to just visit them all, spend the weekend, three days or so, and just um, get all that sort of So I need to, at some point, try and book Copenhagen, which because Scandinavia done, and this year, probably more likely next year, we'll try and get Iceland in as well, and then we'll have all of the Nordic countries as well done. And then also, at some point this year as well, I'll be heading south for the first time into South Europe. First for Spain, going to, well, I'm going to Biarritz in France, before going to Bilbao in Spain. And then later, I'll be going to um, Greece as well in May. So, Biarritz Bilbao is in April, le, mid to late April. And then, um, yes, two weeks later, I'll then be going to Greece. So, do stick around for those ones as well. I'm sure they'll be uh, quite a fun couple of flights as well, especially. 
Nice. Give outside of you another go. Hey, just like that. Not a single lag spike at all. Free to roam around. Free to look around. I don't get this simulator sometimes. It's like it wants to, uh... Wants to bring fear into me. For the, uh, lag spikes and almost crashing of them. No explain. <laughs> That's the thing with flight simulators. They're really good in the sim, they have a terrible menu, or they have a fantastic menu, but their sim itself is bad. I mean, while the uh, X-Plane 11 menu is much nicer than it was at 10, we are definitely losing out on a lot of the customization features. We just set it uh, on a slider, on a couple of preset values. I wouldn't mind a bit more customization with the visuals. Try and tweak this maybe a little bit further. But even then, I'm quite happy with the uh, the fairly solid FPS, actually. In fact, the frames don't appear in the tablet. Uh, why does it show my frame rates? Uh, general config... Sync pilot Q&H minimums. Hang on, so can you actually sync the... So if I set out him to off... That's just saved me so much time. I love that. <laughs> Sorry, but we're keeping that as it is. Um, so general config, so that's, that's fine. That's good. FMX, that's fine. On COD Dark. Yeah, I'll turn that on actually. Shots and starts up. Hide yoke show. Or hides. That's for your different like, setups with your yokes. Radio. No, we use barometer. Sorry. Barometer units. Actually, yeah, radio. HPA. And in kilos, please. And hopefully the config saves. We can always hope. Audio is fine. That's fine. Okay, so I'm not sure why I can't get the uh, FPS to show. But besides all that, I think I'm quite happy with the uh, main setup as it is. So I'll leave that as there. I'm going to now focus on the rest of our flights. Passing through flight level 230 shortly. 23,000. As we continue. Well, actually, yeah, we fly our long trek now over the um, English Channel and later the North Sea. Because we're heading north right now. We won't be going through uh, France. We're not going through Netherlands or anything like that. We are just going to head straight north. Straight to the Netherlands. Netherlands, sorry, straight to Norway. I just zoom out. And there you go. So. Oslo, yeah, that actually is just direct water flight the entire time. We may get a chance to see Denmark in the north of France, but it doesn't seem the most likely given the routes that we have taken. This plane just going through another one of those moments. Fingers crossed, this one's not the end of it. Uh, ooh. Ooh, okay, that is not a good sign. And... Is it back? Yeah, there we go, it's back. I don't know, I don't know. I've not touched x since I did the uh, last flight, so I'm not particularly sure what's causing it to mess around. There you go, it's frozen again. Something is seriously up with this simulator, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Right, so let me just uh, go back, 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 and just turn the tablet off completely.
EFB shouldn't be required. FMS does all that for us. Uh, so let's just get rid of the tablet full stop. I know that we can. Uh, yeah, I don't want to twist it. I just want to detach it from the window. Which I know it is possible. Okay, maybe not then if it's hard clamps to it. I know a lot of these add-ons can actually uh, remove it. I'm looking for a certain click spot somewhere. Nope, it's uh, hard stuck on top of the uh, original clipboards. So we just have to uh, ignore it for the flights so far. Alright, continue to climb. Passing through 75 now. I already checked if anyone's online for the flights today. Um, answer is quite a lot, actually. Quite a lot. We've got a lot of people in Manchester, a lot of people at Gatwick. Might have been the event going on at the moment, actually. That would explain it. Yeah, it almost looks like there's a uh, full event going on right now. So we'll get rid of that for now. Enjoy the flight. Right. Um, so, that was the first reason, actually. We'll go back to the uh, what we were talking about earlier. Um, that was the first reason why we're going to Norway. Just so I can continue my Scandinavia... Scandinordic. Sorry, that's the correct term for it. My Scandinordic trek of Europe. Second of all, uh, goes back to... Back to when I played at Roblox of all games. Yes, Roblox. I'm sure you all know it. Um, basically, so... A couple years ago, a uh, guy on there, I won't say his username just in case, but um, yeah, that type of guy there, he was creating some really cool model... Uh, basically, it was a phone, but using the then new Roblox HTTP service, HTTP service, sorry, you could actually call people from other game worlds, and it was a lot of fun. It was actually a very cool little thing, that. So, yeah, I very much uh, was hyped about it. It helped him, like, test it and whatnot. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So, eventually, um, yeah, the main reason why I stopped playing Roblox, I had a quite popular game on that, actually, as well. It was called Rotocross. Basically, it was like a motorbike racing game. Uh, three, four hundred thousand players it got in total. Although, then I, my account got... Uh, Hacked, we use the uh, true Roblox terms for it. My account's got hacked, and um, yeah, I lost uh, 100,000 Robux, which just uh, kind of broke my heart, and I just never really played it again since. It's annoying because I went to all the. I went to BloxCon London many years ago. I uh, went. Yeah, BloxCon London. I stuck around for the virtual BloxCon and all that. Brokenhearted, they my uh, accounts got hacked and lost everything. Especially because I actually had a sequel for that game going on. It might even still be on my hard drive right now, kind of uh, sitting there, waiting to be finished one day. I, mean, I basically finished all the backing for it, all so the GUIs, the maps, like kind of, what is it? GUI and the racing system. All that was left to build was the lobby and the maps. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's the guy I met up with creating the phone. Uh, he lives out in Norway. And again, being obsessed with Scandinavian culture, I was like, okay, at some point then, I will come to Norway. Would you like to meet up? He was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then, um, yeah, if all goes to plan, I should get a chance to uh, see him out there. If not, then that would be a, a shame. But he doesn't quite live in Norway. He lives, uh, so he doesn't quite live in Oslo. He lives a couple kilometers out of town but um it'll be nice to meet up with him maybe a drink or two we'll see we'll see how it all goes all right three five five 
not too far now to cruising altitudes. But not exactly the uh, quickest climb ever. We're only at 215 knots. Is that our cruising speed for the entire flight? If so, God help us. Uh, no, it should be 271, so. Sorry, 771 even. Whoops, wrong key. There you go, that's letting us know that we're 1000 away. And once we level out, we should then be able to pick up some speeds. Yeah, 7-4 set. Should be 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll just set the um, L nav. So we'll set the V nav to uh, we'll deactivate and set the speed manually. Yeah, there we go. 7-7 seven, seven now on the PFD. Once we level off, the aircraft will speed up to that before I'd link the throttle. Now, a fun fact for you guys. So, like I said, I'm returning tomorrow midday. My flight departs is around uh, 12, 1 o'clock local time. So, um, yeah, basically, when looking at the Ryanair websites for the flight pricing and whatnot, because as you sh can probably assume, I like going for the cheapest flights possible whatsoever. Ryanair, again, very good at that because they always stick their seats on offer. And especially flying to Sweden. Copenhagen and sorry Sweden Denmark and Norway their flights go for about five pounds which genuinely isn't too bad so yeah I ain't complaining on that regards it means I can get uh, get to a couple places in Europe for very cheap I mean they actually do a few gem places like that as well like um Ham not Hamburg sorry not Dusseldorf there was a place that they recently did for like four pounds one way flights, which is dirt cheap, but couldn't do it because it's in the middle of a working week. <laughs> so um, besides that, yeah, that's about it really, actually. So as I'm saying, yeah, uh, man, I don't know why my mind just uh, went off on that. Um, I like doing flights as cheap as possible, so my return flights will not actually be from Oslo, but from Oslo Torp, aka Sanderfjord. So I'll actually need to be travelling 100 kilometres down south in order to actually catch a return flight, because the return flights from Oslo uh, would have been around the same time. But uh, it kind of like twenty pounds more expensive when getting connection to Oslo Torp, which is a one-hour bus journey away, was um, about half the price really. So my main reason why I decided to go for the cheaper option, get a chance to explore a bit more in Norway. Well, I won't get to go into Sandefjord itself, the town, and we'll get to enjoy the roads, which means a couple views of the. Uh, the fjords really. We've got the fjords, we've got a couple of the uh, mountain roads and visuals like here should be really good. I've not done it yet but um, I've been speaking to a couple of guys and they say that taking the bus because the views are stunning. The views are stunning heading south so that I can't wait for. The sim has seemed to have uh, stabilised now. Let's just give the tablet a chance to redeem itself. So, Avi tab, maps, zoom in one. Because I can tell you for a fact that we're not going to get much to look at outside the window.
It's just uh, water. Water, water. Hmm, something on over there. Let's have a look, shall we? Is that a contrail? Is that another airplane? Flying here earlier. I'll never know. I'll never know why contrails always just magically appear in X-Plane. I mean, ours is behind us. Bit, a bit thick. I think we're a bit close to it as well. The right craft goes in the distance, produces a bit more. Uh, what's the vapor clouds behind it? This actually is a lot further away than I first anticipated. But we'll get there, hopefully, before it uh, all disappears. Because those clouds are not going to be there much longer. Nah, I think I may actually miss those. Yeah, I'm going to make that, I'm afraid. Yeah, so, actually, yeah, I might as well show you guys on the map where I'm going. When I land at Oslo, I'll be at Gardamon, which is to the north. Where is Gardamon? It's in the valley by the motorway. And it's a half hour train. So follow the tracks. There we go. That's Gardamon. Take the train into town, which is half an hour and very cheap, fortunately, because it's not exactly a cheaper city in the world, Oslo. More expensive than Sweden, I hear. More expensive than Stockholm. In Stockholm, I spent 200 quid in um, one weekend, so... Yeah, somebody watch my bank account. It's not going to last that much longer. And then they go into the Sanderfjords. Airports to the east. There it is. And then this is where I'll be departing from tomorrow, so... Yeah, got a few things to uh, look at along the way. And Copenhagen will soon be on my list of destinations to go to. I won't do a weather check like that. Bear in mind it's left and right runway. I should check on um, flight radar 24. For the uh, landing options I got at um, Oslo right now. As wherever real world traffic is going. Also be then likely where I'll be going. Oh, okay. Not what I was expecting. Right now, they use the cross render on way. So that will be... Uh, not a runway I have access to. Maybe a problem. Oh, because I'm looking at Stockholm Arlanda. Sorry, wrong airport. Ignore that. I need to go to Norway, not Stockholm. There you go, Oslo. Let's have a clue again that, shall we? In the valley. Aircraft are landing. Zero, one, right. No, ILS zero. ILS one. No, not one right. Okay, on nav zero one. Oh no, ILS one right. And the approach, because I don't think anything will link up with rip amp. Oh yeah, it does. Rip out three Lima. So execute that. We should be our approach then all set. Twenty thousand by rip amp and then the start. Guides us in to the runway. We intercept at 3,500. 
at Seaman. And being a 9 av approach, we'll then be taking it in man- sorry, it's a 9 approach. So we can bring it on the uh, frequencies anyway. We'll keep an eye close eye on the um, approach, just in case it does change later on. But we should be alright for that. Unfortunately, by sending my first day going into um, Gardamone, again being only a half hour journey from the airports to the city, it means that I'll be able to get into the city by 10am local time, which is an hour longer than I got at um, Stockholm. And Sorry, no, because actually, uh, what time did I actually get to Stockholm? So I got to the airport quite early. Let me go through my trip history. And the choir cap, very good for keeping track on that. And also, would it be worth, worth pre booking my ticket from Oslo, Gardamone to the city? Or do I just buy a ticket from the ticket machine there? I might double check the. Uh, if it's like the UK where it's cheaper to pre book. Because I don't think they have a metro system in Oslo. Could be wrong. Let me just check. Uh, Oslo Metro. They have, okay, the T-Barn, the Tunnel Barn, and, okay. I've got a few trains in there. Although none of them go to Gardamine, which means I can then be happy to say that, yeah, I have to see if there's a National Rail um, ticket going on there. So I land at Oslo at 9.30. I'd say, again, being a larger airport, uh, half an hour to go from airplane to the outside because no under hard luggage nothing I just speed walk through the airport get through security I get out at 10 I catch a train I get to city at 10.30 which gives me a couple hours before I check into the hotel um, Stockholm on the other hand I land at 10.30 local time I then arrived at Stockholm Central, so yeah, I took the train from 11.23 to 12.29, so I arrived at Stockholm Central at 12.30. Compared to 10.30, it actually gives me two hours more in Oslo than I did at um, Stockholm. Then when I wake up the next morning, make sure I'm not doing this wrong. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm looking at a stopover right now on the uh, app. No, stopover for a bus. So, I need to wake up. I need to be at Oslo bus terminal by 8.15 in the morning. Meaning, I will need to be awake 7 by the latest. Maybe 6.30 if I'm going to find somewhere to have a quick breakfast. But uh, 7 by the latest. Get to Oslo bus station for an 8.15 departure. I take a bus to Sandefjord. Uh, Sandefjord Fox Rod, I'm pretty that so wrong. Um, yeah, and then from there, I then stop over for 30 minutes for catching another bus to um, Sandefjord Torp Lufthaven, which is the airport, where I then take a flight from 11.55. 11.55 from Oslo Torp back to London Sunset by 12.55 when I then arrive. And then most likely catch a Stansted Express from the airports back to London. So, it should be a fun weekend this. Quite busy on Sunday in terms of actually travelling around, although the bus journey itself... Uh, thank you Antonio Rosa for subscribing on YouTube. Despite the fact that this is a premiere, and so you actually subscribed a couple weeks ago now. <laughs> um, less than a month ago though, because I'm rolling this in March. But, uh... About two weeks ago, you subscribed, Antonio. But thumbs up. Thank you very much, anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, was not expecting that to happen. What was I saying? Uh, yeah. So, busy day on the Sunday. 
but the bus to Sandefjord should also act like a a fun little journey of the Norwegian scenery. The motorway being on the side of a valley, so thumbs up for that. I'm quite excited. And then the rest of Sunday, I might get a chance to put in a live stream at that rate. If I can get home quick enough. Maybe I'll do a, a train sim stream or something just to keep you guys occupied. But um, I'm excited. I'm excited. So, a look through the window. Look through my window, actually. 121.37. We actually have tower. Okay. 121.37. We'll have my window in a second. Um, sounds good. 121.37. That connects. What's the name of this place actually? Uh, Echo Kilo Delta Kilo. Let me get the name right first. Echo Kilo Delta Kilo Airports. Uh, Denmark Roskilde. Hey there, Roskilde. This is Ryan there. 771 Mike with you at flight level 370. Three, four, five, four. Uh, three. Whoops. Four. Five, four. Three, four, five, four. For Ryanair, seven, seven, one, Mike. Ryanair, seven, seven, one, Mike. Identified. There we go. Now that identified, and uh, now get to enjoy the lack of conversation. I have my doubts as to how many people are actually on this frequency right now. Not many would be my answer to that. You never know. You get one or two conversations. So as I was saying, I look through my window, shall we? My six, the seat is there for two six. Also, I much prefer 2624, because this row gets 
two windows, one for me, one for the other two passengers, without getting their way, while two floors a bit more, at least more like two floors row, but yeah, it was just like one window in the middle, kind of just gets in the way for the other passengers, and I don't like being a nuisance. Yeah, left hand side also, not too much of a view really. Check the map, we are... Did we say we're at halfway? Uh, total flight time is 38 minutes. Time to arrive 50 minutes, so no, we're just under halfway. So we've got a little bit left to go before we uh, reach that point. Yeah, fortunately the uh, controller here does have the clearest of microphones because I certainly would not be able to understand most people on this frequency right now. Anyways, top of set actually isn't that far away. 100 and... 200 and... 15 miles, I'd say. 250 to top of the sense. Yeah, so we already have our approach set. We should be alright for um, landing. One zero five, one two five zero seven five zero two five. Okay, even I got that wrong.
Yeah, so we're now about halfway through the flights. I always love my Delta Yankee Alpha. No other aircraft will ever take its place. The day Ryanair choose to retire it, for me, probably will be the saddest. As it will then mean I do have to uh, change this out. Again, fortunately, that is not for a, a fair while to come. I should say fair while, Ryanair is in the process of retiring some of the older Delta aircraft, or some of the Elko ones as well, so Delta Yankee Alpha has actually almost skipped being uh, retired, so it probably isn't that far down the list anyway. Not long to go now, not long.
So at the moment, I mean, again, don't forget though, we are on a supposed live active frequency. Although... No one communicating. We won't be here for too long, I don't think. Just double check uh, online again. So yeah, we're on one, two... One, two, one, three, seven, five. So they're still active, 12137, Mikhail Jonsson. Uh, who's that actually? Echo November, Bravo, Romeo. So there is a Norwegian airport actually active at the moment as well. Though not exactly someone will be in much or any contact of at all. We've uh, dropped a few thousand on the altimeter there. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to squad back to get rid of that. Uh, yeah, we just dropped the altimeter there. A bit turbulent or something, just uh, bouncing. But besides that, we're not too far away now from from beginning to enter Norwegian airspace. So a little bit while to go before we get to Oslo. Again, that 10 mile border around the country, which marks the uh, land around it. Delta Airlines Triple Seven, currently at Oslo. In fact, his flight is supposedly Oslo to Oslo. Not sure how he's done that, but um, there you go. That's his flight plan. We are. Where are we now? That's us. Seven Seven One Mike. Whoops! That plane just disappeared. <laughs> I was going to click on. We've got you, Scandinavian from. Stavanger Solar to Bergen Flesland. You're also off to Edinburgh, 91 Sierra Victor. And you've just come to a landing yourself. Fairly long approaching, but fair enough. So, we are going to land at Gardamone eventually. You are departing, actually. I can actually ping him a message. Who is he? Delta Airlines. That. Uh, dot message. You might want to check your flight plan. You've filed Oslo to Oslo. Give a quick uh, heads up warning. We might just be doing like a circuit or something, but uh, never know. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a few aircraft down south of Sweden, but again, Finland is and always will be empty. Until that one event of the year, the uh, Go See Santa event, where I then become super filled for that very reason. In fact, uh, if I quickly go to my profile, with routes that are very much like this one. Where is it? Thin air. I remember my uh, long curvy entry. One holding pattern loop. Second one almost completed it until we got given a clearance into the airport. Yeah, yeah, came to land and ended that one quite nicely. It's a fun event. It is a fun event. the numbers as well, so 662 and Vatsim. That's nice, okay. Uh, 662 and Vatsim, 537 on my VAO, and then put it slightly even um, 492 as well. Yeah, there we are. We should soon. That's fine. You too, good night. 2.8, they are closing. Time is now 8.25 in the morning. Our arrival time is 9.25, I believe. No, it's 9.30, so... Well, definitely not an hour away, that I must say. Um, go to kayak. I mean, scheduled flight time is 2 hours 5 minutes. 
I have my doubts as to whether or not the flights would actually be that long. Um, yeah, Oslo trip. Time of arrival is 9.45. So supposedly we've got an hour and twenty no. Yeah, an hour and twenty nine minutes left till we uh, land. No, an hour and nineteen minutes, sorry. Although in reality our ETA is thirty minutes. So if we do make it to an early land well, at least for me in the real world, so I'm glad I'm doing this before my trip, because now that I know I could actually land uh, it's a fairly straight in approach as well because of the fact that um no, hang on, let me go step by step just to make sure that I've not done something wrong. If I zoom in Alright, SVA, Rehelm was the final waypoint. And then it's ooh, it gets very congested here. Uh, then it's Roxham. Okay, so we go in on the approach, and then we kind of cut off the side a little bit. My guess, kind of just get out of the way of other traffic coming in. Yeah, I can kind of see why it's done that. So that is a more than fine approach. And then if things go wrong, you to go around. Then it's uh, hang on. There's the runway, there, and then the vector, which can just sends the aircraft off in a straight direction until, yeah, until we can actually get ourselves uh, reprogrammed. Yeah, vector 049, just endless at 4000 until we get ourselves around with tower, or then most likely uh, guide us in on a vectored approach. So the approach makes sense, that's all fine. And then in a couple of minutes I means since we're about six no sixty miles till next waypoint and then it's hundred and twenty until top of descent. Oh yeah, um, I've just been reminded as well, because I fly on the 30th to uh, Norway, yesterday, whoops, ooh, 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 uh, did not want to do that. <laughs> just accidentally hit my controller there, right on the flaps. Um, yeah, so, 29th of March was Brexit Day, or at least, uh, yeah. 
you guys are the European Union. And yeah, I'm still flying on holiday. As I say, Brexit. I'm not going to go too political on this channel because that's just not what I'm here for. But for me, it's only Brexit by name, not by nature. We're on paper out of the European Union. I don't see much going to change, if I'm totally honest. They're not going to stop all trade between the UK and the EU. They're not going to stop all flights. They just wouldn't do that. They are not going to not gonna cut out essentially the biggest trading platform in the world. By name, but not by nature. Yeah, this flight really is a lot shorter than, a lot shorter than most, shorter than I was expecting, so, yeah, we're coming to land in a couple of minutes. Unfortunately for me as well, because of the fact that we are landing so early. Again, there you go. UK time is 7.34. If anybody's watching this right now, and like I said, <laughs> salute you. Salute you for tuning in at such an early time. You people are the true Droya fans. Those who will come and uh, appear out of nowhere. Perhaps we should just see seeing um, Norwegian ground below us any second now. Just looks at the uh, map there. If I zoom in, yeah, we'll see um, Christian Sand ahead of us. We won't quite fly the Sand of Fjord, but uh, that's fine. Christian Sand and a few of the islands just below it as well. Should be right beneath me. Oh yeah, there's the coastline. Not quite visible due to the cloud cover. 
So yeah, he can just about kind of make out the ground shapes. Hopefully by the time we start the sense, things will be a little nicer. But as we know, a few clouds are 800, broken at 1,300. Okay, so cloud cover has kind of lifted a bit. We're not quite perfect today yet. Uh, 997 is Q&H. Oops, uh, 997. We'll set that in the back end just for later. 997, this should also sync. Yes, it has. And we'll set up our frequencies as well. So 30 flaps. We might even go for 40 flaps for this one. Yeah, 40 flaps, 138, 11195, uh, 111195, 111195. And then the course heading is 0, whoops, whoops. I see the trim there. <laughs> My fault. Zero one three. Zero one three. Right, that's the ILS now set. Again, forty flaps. We had a nest of forty flaps landing in a little while now. One three eight landing, nice and slow. Should give me the the time, the distance, kind of just focus on getting the aircraft down, really. Top of the sense now, 40 miles. Right, so with it coming into 20 now, I should zoom in again on the PFD. Bring the aircraft to my right, 6,000 below, but somewhere out there. Uh, Project's flight, let's have a look, shall we? That is me. Oh, it's another aircraft going to Oslo right now. He departed um, Amsterdam Schiphol. He is a 738 KLM. Although he's only at 34,000. While I, cru while I cruise at 36. Yeah, KLM 71 Foxtrot. So is he really on top of the scents? If so, he's only quite early on. Although he's again to my 
right. Do I... Wait, let's show you the map, shall we? Uh, let's go to... I wonder actually if I can sync them two together. Oh, who are you as well? There's another red half coming. Well, you're going to uh, Bergen Flesland, so not a problem to me. SAS 155. Uh, Norwegian has landed from Tromsø to Oslo. He's landing very shortly now, so you're not that much of a concern as well either. And the Kenim's actually on Predator 5 as well, which is always good to see. So, okay, that's him. And Stam Schiphol to Oslo Gardamon, and that's his aircraft. He is Pab Hotel, Bravo, Charlie Bravo. Then by Goose Milkman at 28,000, although descending. Red Crew's a little longer. Then by Drury, there you go. We are 36,000. It's going to be a bit faster, I think, as well. 459 to 441. So when we start our descent, that will also um, require him to. Well, he's both of us kind of maneuver around that. I will start my descent very shortly, because he top descent coming up within 5 nautical miles. This needs to be at 3,500 for the intercept. Just confirms why it's 3,5 we need. Uh, 11,000, 5,000 for 3,5, that's it. Yeah, so 3,500 for the intercept. And then someone behind us as well, also going to um, Oslo Gardamo. There's another one going from Sunset to Oslo, just behind us. Hang on, desktop, so. There's me, 1318. There's the KLM to Gardamo. The one that I see is you, or me, or this one. Fox shot India Bravo, offline though. <sighs> He's offline, so I'm afraid we can't actually uh, see him on that sim. That's a shame, which actually also needs mean. I should probably check other traffic coming into Oslo. You're departing Oslo for Gatwick, that's fine. Fair enough, so no other traffic coming to Oslo. So, projects fly. It's a few aircraft, but not so much in um, that sim. Alright, top of descent, throttle goes down. Uh, starting descent, flight level 370 for. Um, Echo November Golf Mike. Let's go through the approach now. So, um, expecting runway zero one right via Ripper. Whoops, Ripper three Lima approach. Approach ETA twelve. Whoops, 12, well, I wouldn't say 12 minutes direct, I'd say more like 18 minutes. Drag required, that is fine. And hopefully that will keep the, uh, bring the attention into the KLM, who's also again landing at the same airport, and therefore we'll need to uh, also be aware that I'm coming into lands nearby. Keep an eye on him on the Projects Fly map. For the fact that with Projects Fly, it gives me <coughs> sorry, it gives me a bit more of a current updates. <coughs> so yes, yeah, so I'm now ahead of him and starting my descents. The other aircraft is now at twenty-three thousand. Much further behind. Not much further behind, but uh, yeah, he's probably coming in on a similar approach to me as well. Uh, KLM 71 Foxtrot, what is your um, approach for Echo Golf November Mike and ETA? See if I can uh, try and bring some life into him. So I want to know where he is and how he lands. That way I can just move the aircraft around us both. Uh, 
Uh, he's slowing to, to 30. Uh, Roger that. We should then be in front of you. We'll keep the speed up for approach. Yeah, so we'll keep a uh, slightly higher speed. Until we come into land later. We need to be at uh we'll hit that to two in it ref. Thank you. Let me know what you'll be if you want me to hold. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't be necessary. I probably said that wrong, but hey. Oh what do I do? Uh sure, yeah, if I tell him to take the same approach as well. Uh, if you also take uh, Ripper through Lima, then our spacing should be fine. Drag acquired. So if I check our speeds, uh, have Ripper through Lima as well, perfect. Uh, so I'm at 292, slowing to 280. He's slowing to 230. Going back to 250. Okay, so he's going to speed up slightly. Because, yeah, he's um, a little bit of a slow approach, actually. But it's too slow for um, his timing. As long as he's in constant contact, means that we can both uh, keep an eye on each other. Right, I'll check my uh, altitude and size, sorry. So, legs, two, 120 by Roxim. Yeah, we'll make that no problem. 120 by Roxim, 110 by Golf Mike. We hold at 110 until we get cleared onto the approach. So, like I said, we've got that uh, slight left turn for looping back into the airport. In fact, what I could do is skip. Two of the golf mics because they are holding. Execute that because there's no other traffic in the area, which means we should be cleared for a straighten approach, anyhow. Yeah, so golf mic 410, there's two, 420 and 430. I'm number one, so I'm four one. He'll be number two, so he should technically even just uh, go to four two zero and turn back on the route. That comes down to his uh, choice of approach. Let's see what sign come now on. Also, let's speak to the passengers about the sense as well. So, nope, not checklists. Who needs them? Sense. Yep, we are definitely running ahead of schedule. I can tell you that for a fact. Very nice approach to today. We'll keep the uh, spiders on for the majority of the approach as well, actually. Seems to be doing alright for the uh, speed at the moment. Yeah, 6.5 nautical mile separation. Yeah. That's more than enough. We'll. It's more than enough. Uh, I'll try to make a, a Ryanair joke in there. It's more than enough if we're on the runway longer than two seconds. Uh, extra RYR. These apply. I'll be long gone. Smiley face. Uh, speed brakes off since you can now pick up a bit more speed.
And sending it only 1,600 now per minute, 1,700 feet per minute, means that uh, our speed shouldn't increase that much for the remainder of this approach. Landing will be a crosswind. Once we get to 10,000, I'll have to recheck the um, approach again, the Q and H and all that, the winds. And three crosswind runways, three crosswind landings in a week. Let's hope tomorrow is a bit nicer when I return back to uh, Stansted from Gardamon. From Torp, sorry, from Torp Sandefjord, not Gardamon. Gardamon, we will not be doing the flights back for. A shame, I know, a shame. the last couple of waypoints um, now. 40 miles ahead of us, 4,000 feet. Next one will be the 3-5 intercept before coming to land. Check the map quickly. There we are. Going to the valley now, where Oslo sits. Still loving the clouds as well, so... We'll see how much we get to see on the approach into Oslo. Hopefully my visual visuals are a little nicer than we got in um, Sim right now. Hopefully we'll have a bit of sunny weather than I do go to Oslo in the real world. But as it stands in the flight sim, it's full cloud cover. Not much really to look at. Okay, so if we went ping, which means drag, very shortly passing below 10,000. Yeah, so much to look at below. So, so much. Um, it was kind of like that when I went to uh, Stockholm, actually, Stockholm Skavstad. The weather was not on our side, cloudy the entire weekend. And then, yeah, as we were on descent, as we were on final, out of nowhere, the ground just came into view, so... Alright, 240 now, so spoilers we can disarm. No, we won't because we're going to pass 10,000 as the speed increases again. Yeah, we need to slow down very shortly now. Landing lights set. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to kind of level out in a moment. Stop such a steep descent rate so I can start activating our. Flaps. 2700 is way too much for this right now. In fact, let's set that to uh, 6000. And then 4000 Bravo, because then hopefully 6000 means a much, much shallower descent, right? Yeah, 
I'm up snow than the traffic, so I don't stand down timid, sir. Yeah, much shallower descent rights. I'm going to go blue 250 again, so laps one. That can now go back to 5,000 again. Go back into the cloud layer. And with it, WX uh, Echo November Golf Mic. Uh, right, so 997, that's fine. Clouds at 800, clouds at 1300, clouds at 800, 1300, 1600. Yeah, so it'll be a blind landing. Cat 1 right now. Aircraft will guide us manually for most of the approach. For the sake of frame rates, I will now use that to kind of, whoops, no, not quality on FPS, just kind of save a few frames, makes it less puffy, but visibility will still stay the same nevertheless. Uh, auto brakes out to two, not one, actually might even go for three. A long runway at Garden Mine, but uh, I kind of want to get off it soon. For the sake of the storm that's coming up. Winds now more of a headwind, but again, not quite on the runway angle. More so, we will need to uh, crab it for the landing as well. If we are crabbing, remember to kick in the flaps before touchdown. The rudder, sorry. Kicking the rudder for touchdown. Yeah, just a slight view at the top of the hill there. Just top of the valley. So slowly lower the flaps. Four more stages until we get to 40. In a moment we have a left turn, which brings us onto the uh, runway heading, although not yet established. Although, good time to turn on the uh, localizer. One last check of the KLM. Yeah, he is on the uh, star now. He made the left turn. Therefore now cuts back into um, Oslo. to make a left turn and that will be the uh, chance to misled landing gear as well. Ground just came into view. Our first chance to kind of see the ground here at um, Oslo. All looking good so far. How about it's not maybe the best visual in the world. Left turn now. And 
that's there's basically all that remains of our flights. Right, autopilot to and approach. Established runway zero one right. Whoops, one right. Echo Golf November Mike. It's now raining. I've got the runway in sight. Wipers starts. So I'll put it on slow for now. If I actually set it to uh, the fancy rain effects, visual effects, uh, ski rain, how's the frame rate to do with that? Okay, it's actually probably not raining enough for the ski rain effects to appear. So we'll just leave it on the um, default one. Max tablet, we'll cut off. Visibility is not quite as bad as uh, whether initially said it would be. Get it down. Sorry I put a gear down earlier, I uh, know, sight of raining, so that got my mind. Uh, yeah, gear down. Flaps down to 30. Flaps down to 40. We are on the approach. Set the speed to 138, which is our VREF for landing. I'm surprised the uh, rain effects wouldn't appear, but hey, that's off now, so we can ignore it. Yeah, got some uh, EFR scenery going on here. I believe I do. Uh, yes, I do. Just kind of uh, give us a nicer. Uh, Nicer visual for the landing. We'll, we'll look at those later once we have um, actually landed the passenger views. And definitely the window fog in there slightly as well. Good thing I have got the uh, window heats activated. Alright, we'll shortly pass through 1000 where I will be able to manage the aircraft's landing manually. As the aircraft is, at least the runway is in visual. There you go, land three. So actually it has uh, come into an auto land setup. Although whether or not the aircraft will actually uh, flare during landing, we'll find out later. We'll find out soon enough. Alright, 1200. Oh, there we go. Weather has just dropped now. Auto throttle deactivates. Come on, aircraft. Don't fail me now. No trees on the runway. Are they using trees as a uh, runway markings here at uh, Gardamon? Eighty knots. Reverse thrust cut. We would have flared that. The aircraft was preparing to flare. 
but I just still don't trust the Zyvo enough to completely do it. So I took the uh, last seconds manual uh, touchdown. Although, hear the music in the background, we have landed here on time. Now, time to be concerned. We have cleared the runway. Over there, actually, a few aircraft are only parked here. Now I've got to figure out where I'm going to. There's actually a Ryanair parks there, so I presume that that will be where my gates would be as well. Uh, clear of runway, have a safe landing. Yeah, up ahead, it seems to be where all the regional aircraft and well, the Ryanair's would go because again we don't quite pay for the jet bridges and whatnot, so it's just a quick taxi to the um, gates ahead of us. Which now we are on taxi lights as well. APU starting. Aircraft we can now depressurize, turn the packs off, and now there's a few gates ahead of us. I think we will park next to. There's a case a dead space next to the Ryan there, we will take it. That is jet bridges. And they all do kind of actually. Well, we will go there then. Is it just me or those wipers actually sound a bit like seals? <laughs> seals just uh making their noise. Right, so gate's just ahead of us. Oh, it's snowing here actually. That's no longer rain. That is snow. Uh, yeah, we'll just roll over so slightly. Stop here. Parking brake set. AP power on. AP bleed on. Engine bleeds off. And engines cut. Maybe flaps need to go up as well, actually. Probably shouldn't that before we got to gates. There we go. Arrived, flight duration, 1 hour 36. Uh, that tank light's off. Strobe light's off. anti collision light's off. And, um... So that's it really, turn the tablet on, and we can start with the uh, ground services. So I want the stairs, forward cargo, and the fuel truck, because why well, I won't do the flights now, because again, this is not exactly a flight I'm going to be on. We do have the uh, chocks now in position, GPU connected, and then once the, uh, I don't know, if we go to PA, do we have one for just landing? Uh, no, we don't. Oh well. Right, so back in. Next page. Doors. Doors are all unlocked. And so once everything goes into position, we can then open the doors. Just a quick look. Yes, stairs are just underneath the jet bridge, but shouldn't. Affected. In fact, yeah, they very much are underneath the jet bridge, almost providing like a roof. Uh, that being close to the door as well. Passengers do uh, mind your head when you do go underneath. Right. Aircraft is secure. Exits open. Passengers are now free to disembark. That seems to be everything else on my end. Now complete. So we'll finish the flight. Fire the pirate. Now, close smart cars, because this thing is just, like I said, being very slow today. Uh, Project's flight, we can also tune into. In fact, the guy is just very much about to land, so if we complete the flights and switch to free camp, we shall go watch him on short final. Uh, yeah, I'll try and go for a bit that doesn't have a tree on it. Uh, watching you land. Smile, you'll... On a YT and Twitch premiere in a couple weeks. Smiley face. 
Beautifully done. Standard 737-800. Bumpy landing. During a uh, massive storm. KLM-71 Foxtrot. Ignore the trees. <laughs> they shouldn't be there. I wish the uh, exclusions from X-Plane properly uh, excluded all this stuff. But hey, I mean, again, it's kind of uh, ironic that they're also perfectly centered the runway. Almost like their plans to be there. So, you'll clear the runway in a second. And in a moment, also, I'll disconnect from um, Squawk Box and see if you actually replies to that. On the disconnect from Squawk Box, and then, um, yeah, set up the uh, replays for this flight. The landing was, was at 1.7 something for this landing, which is pretty good. But now that I know the aircraft will actually auto land, uh, flare the aircraft and whatnot during the uh, Cat 3 landings, that is also, again, like I said, a nice note for the future. Right, that's all good. So we'll close the objects fly now, keep that in the background. Shooting for 2 hours 10 minutes now, so not too bad. UK time. Uh, quarter past uh, eight. If you're tuning in now, <laughs> you've kind of missed the entire flight. Right, X walk box. I've been on the ground long enough. Let's disconnect. Go to. Actually, you need to close the exits because, again, the uh, doors just be open for landing, which is not quite what we want to do. View developer. Sorry, flights. Toggle replay mode. And we'll go to a. Couple of moments for touchdown, get a little bit further since the uh, actual approach itself. I quite enjoyed that. Right, let's go. So, 2.52. Fairly stormy. Got the Oslo grounds below us. Well, I say Oslo, this is just outside of Oslo. Got Norwegian ground below us. I'm kind of, because I'm using VFRC and everything right now, in a way, I'm almost. Uh, Cheating myself of experiencing this firsthand because this is going to be fairly similar to what I experience in the real world. Although, like I say, hopefully in a slightly, slightly sunnier weather. Scenery looking good. Don't know if the replay uh, will show the wing effects. I don't think it will. Something that sometimes happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, Next plane replays, which is a shame. But nevertheless, coming in. Slight wing flex, the aircraft battling the storm. Trees blast a couple of houses. At this point, we now seem to enter the threshold of the runway. There's the train track, there's the motorway. Welcome to Gardamon. So 177 touchdown, where we kind of expect it to be quite a light one. There we go. If it weren't for the flat trees, I think that would probably be one of the most realistic scenic landings we had. Okay, maybe the uh, rain on the window should start moving across screen as well. Besides those two. Maybe one of the most realistic landings we've had.
Right, let's now do the landing from the other side. We'll go over a slightly shorter final. So, coming in, entering the threshold of the runway. Ignore the uh, tree we saw on the runway there. And touchdown. You know that tree as well, and that one. And preferably that one too. Yeah, that's, that's just annoying. That's just annoying to say anything. The tree's on the runway. And, um, yeah, I've got one more view to look at. Shall be. Yeah. Stereo view. Do it from the front as well last time. Because that seems quite an effective way of doing it. Kind of just point the camera up a bit. Few trees just below. And as we touch down, the camera kind of just uh, angles up a bit. To show off what is. Not a half bad touchdown. Again, just ignore the trees. The trees aren't there. They never have been, they never will be. Especially that one, that just uh, came into reality from the angle of the angle it was pointing at. There you have it. There you have it. One of my softer landings. The next plane, in what is probably one of the not so great weather conditions we've done it in. But I think for now, that will bring to an end. Another premiere of my arrival into Oslo. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, do subscribe. Thank you again if you tuned into the premiere. Hopefully the uh, in sim time was fairly similar to that of the real world. But again, the only time we'll ever know that is once the premiere is live. And once I'm on board the aircraft itself. What's Telco the one behind us? Uh, Delta Yankee Whiskey. Ooh, very, <laughs> very close to Delta Yankee Alpha. That one will come in a few aircraft after this one. Almost their sister craft. I mean, in fact, all Ryanair aircraft, 737s are sister crafts. But this one's just a bit closer. Right, thank you very much for watching. Do just leave a like if you did. Do subscribe. Thank you to that person who subscribed halfway through the premiere as well. Shout out to that person. <laughs> Not expecting that whatsoever. But, um, yeah, that's it now. Tomorrow, again, actually, yeah, tomorrow, around 12, 12 30, I'll be doing the return flights, so definitely tune in for that as well. Premiering again both on YouTube and Twitch. Thank you, and goodbye.